Welcome to a very special episode of At The Bar Podcast. I am Mike, and with me today is one of the original co-hosts. The returning champion. Returning champion. We Chad. have Chad. <laughs> and then guest starring in, ter- in uh, Replacing Taco, we have Preston from The Beer Chasers. That's right. It's, it's about time. I think you've helped me out maybe 17 episodes now. I finally make my first <laughs> At The Bar Podcast uh, debut. Yeah. So, and, and with us today, we have Captain Steve here from Three Daughters Brewing. And thanks, Steve, thanks for coming out, guys. I'm doing great. Good, good. So we are here, as you can see, we are at Three Daughters Brewing here in downtown St. Pete. Uh, our first on location podcast episode. So I'm very excited. So let's uh, let's get to it, right? Yes, indeed. Let's so, do it. Steve, Captain Steve, yeah. tell us about three daughters. Is there three daughters? There are three daughters. Mike <laughs> has three little girls. They're, oh, they're, they're okay. very little girls, so don't say anything bad about them. <laughs> <laughs> um, he knows us too well. He's been watching our show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the name came about. Uh, we we just picked a name. Uh, I think Mike Mike did it to make his wife happy. I'm sure. So, so he was able to open the brewery. Cool, cool. So um, tell us a little bit about Three Daughters. You've been here. You said since before we've, day one. Yeah, we've we've been open officially as a brewery for 16 months. But mm-hmm. uh, before that, uh, the, the where we actually got our start, Mike was a co-owner of a of a restaurant downtown here called Bella Brava, mm-hmm. and he saw that craft beer was something that was up and coming. And he he asked the the chef who was our brewmaster Ty mm-hmm. if if he could make beer. And he said, yeah, I mean, it's a recipe. You just, you're boiling water and, and following, following things right. to the T. <laughs> and he uh, went and got a kit and we made it and, and uh, just kind of learned, learned, learned how to do it from there. You know, just internet, no, no formal teaching of any kind. Mm-hmm. And, con- you know, we made enough decent beer that we convinced Mike to, uh, to buy us a half barrel system at the restaurant. Wow. Okay. And uh, we started making beer there and selling it out of, out of Bella Brava. And actually it, it overtook all of the other beer sales at the restaurant. We our little half barrel system <laughs> was was out selling Bud Light in in, in, in Bella Brava. It was a uh, it was a bit of a challenge. We uh, the restaurant was very busy. So, I'm sure. So yeah. we had to come in at uh, four o'clock in the morning to <laughs> to start our brew day so yeah. that we could get done before before you know the prep guys got there to, to start their day. I heard from someone that uh, you guys use it to batter your uh, your beer batter as well. Yep, yep. That we we did use it for that. Uh, but I, I I really liked the the fact that we made our own beer and we we sold it there and it it, it did so so well. And as, as that continued to grow and grow, you know, the, the idea of started that, you know, we could really do this on a larger scale. And so we, we started just hammering down recipes as well as we could. And, and we got the money together to, to open this place. Cool. So what, what is your title here at Three Daughters? You uh, kind of talked about it just now. but I guess it would be Brewer. Uh, but brewer. but we, we, you know, we don't have a whole lot of staff right now, especially in the back of house side. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, we do, we do everything from I do brewing, I, I can the beer, I keg the beer. You know, uh, put together grain orders. We uh, we actually have a a box truck, a large a large refrigerated box truck. Mm-hmm. Getting getting beer distributed all over the state of Florida is, is a super headache. You know, if you can't convince uh, a distributor from Miami to come get ten kegs from you, right? Well, I'll put it right in my truck and drive it down there. So sure. I'm in, I'm in everything: truck driver, production manager. You know, we we just do whatever we have to to get the get the job done. Cool, cool. So, um, what kind of beers do you guys brew here? Uh, we do mainly ales. We've done okay. a few lagers. But uh, our our flagship is the Beach Blonde Ale. Mm-hmm. Uh, you always want. No, we'll we'll, we'll have some we'll later. Yeah, it. we'll try it later. Okay. So this is all about three daughters. So our, our flagship is the Beach Blonde Ale. You know, mm-hmm. it's it's just a great Florida beer, nice nice and light, a little bit of citrus in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, we also open with uh, an oatmeal stout because we just love a good malty beer. All right. And uh, our brown pelican dunkel. It's a it's a dark German wheat. Okay. And Thank you for making German beers, by the way. <laughs> we were talking about it earlier. And like, it seems like everybody local has 15 IPAs, a couple pale ales, and some sours, and nobody's really doing German beer. So th- thank you very much for, for giving yeah, us some you options. Know, you know, that was, that was one of the reasons we opened with it as one of our three uh, core brands. And, you know, it's, it's, it's hard. Not, not a lot of people know what it is, so it's, mm-hmm. it hasn't sold as well as we hoped. So we actually uh, turned it into a seasonal for a while. Okay. But we had, we had enough pull in the tasting room, people coming in and saying, why isn't that dark weed on draft anymore? Right. Mm-hmm. That uh, we had to make it two and three barrels at a time, and then now we've we've put it back into onto our production list, and we were making it thirty cool. barrels at a time again. Awesome! Wow. So I no go ahead. No. Uh, so after after no, we opened then, uh, we we were you know everyone loves IPAs, so we were making <laughs> two and three barrels at a time of IPA, and we just couldn't keep it on draft before the ne- before the next batch would get done. Right. So we we started brewing it thirty barrels and and distributing it, and it's done very well as well. It's our it's our number two. Now, so we, we that's when we chose to do cans. We we did the blonde and the IPA, and and they they sell almost identically in the cans, mm-hmm. but uh, but in draft blonde is just killing it. Right. Nice. So you, you kind of touch on cans. So you guys are at the point now where um you are canning. We talked a little bit in the brewery earlier about this, but uh, 
kind of talk about that jump, you know, it's not an easy jump, you know, to go from kind of starting your own brewery to just getting to canning, kind of what are the steps to get there and kind of what are some of the difficulties? Well, well, for one, it's, it's hard to gauge how, how successful they're going to be. Mm-hmm. You, uh, one, you have to buy an entire truckload of cans. It's 24 pallets. It's like almost 200,000 cans. So it's a big investment, not only just for the canning line, but each, each can purchase is mm-hmm. tens of thousands of dollars. Well, yeah. And then the production side of it, well, you know, we had 180 barrels worth of space to, to produce beer, and we're having no problem keeping up, mm-hmm. you know, because how many, how many places can really get kegs in a week? Sure. Whereas cans, you know, you fill them up, you send them out, and they're at Publix. They're on the shelf. They're gone, you know. Yeah. And you just to stock one Publix might take 10 or 20 cases, mm-hmm. and that's, that's a barrel of beer. So you got how many Publix is in, the, in, the, oh, in Florida? All just, time, yeah. Uh, yeah. So mm-hmm. the beer just evaporates at that point. Mm-hmm. So luckily, Mike, Mike planned, our owner, he planned ahead of time and already had 120 barrel fermenters on order from the company mm-hmm. down the street called Brewfab. And they, they literally came in one at a time as we just desperately needed them. If we had if we'd gotten them a week later, we would, we would have had to told Great Bay, oh, we don't have the beer. We're not going to have the beer for a while. And that's but something you definitely don't want to tell a distributor that you don't have their beer. <laughs> luckily, yeah. luckily, we haven't had to tell anyone, no, you, we don't have the beer. We, we, we will tell them, you know, hey, how about Tuesday instead of Friday or right, something. Right, right. But they do always get their beer. and it, it Eventually, to sooner rather than later. Sooner, sooner. So what um, made you guys go to cans more so than bottling? Um, I, I think just the, uh, the fact that our Beach Blonde Ale is our, is our number one seller, and it's a beach beer. So glass just doesn't work well with with boating and, and beach and, right. and just things like that. Golf, yeah. yeah. And so there and you know there's there's sides of, of, of bottling and canning that you know canning is better in a lot of ways. It's it's mm-hmm. it's completely enclosed space. Mm-hmm. You know you don't get light in there affecting the beer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sure. And uh, you actually it's they, the way they coat the cans these days. To, you actually have less contact with metal inside the can than you do in a bottle with it touching the bottle cap. Right. Right. Oh wow. Um, I did want to ask you, you. You said that you guys did start here more locally, um, but has Tropicana? Feel, okay, in case anybody watching doesn't know, um, we're over here, kind of uh, by Tampa, St. Pete, right behind us here. You can see the Tropicana field. Yeah, that's walking distance. Not literally, though. Like you can. <laughs> no, you can. It's literally, right there it's there right, from yeah. the parking yeah. lot where we were. It's it's five blocks west. We're, yeah. we're five blocks west of the Trop. In fact, people are allowed to park here for free and walk to the game, and wow, we, get, we get a lot of that lot of foot traffic. People come here, and if it's a night game, they'll come and get a beer. They'll go to the game, and then while well, their car is here, they might as well have a beer when they get back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's that's awesome. That's what I was going to get into. Like if that uh, if that traffic has led to um, your name getting out there and everything. Yeah, uh, we're we're on draft at the Trop. They they pour us in. Oh wow, it's called oh, the patio cool. back there, and uh, so we we get we go through a good amount of beer there. You know, the first that was probably our first big order that we got from Great wow. Bay was was the. the the day they stocked the trop with their beer and they came and just cleaned out the walk-in. I mean, they literally said, what do you got? We'll take it. And I, I love that. I hate going into a bar or an event like that and they don't carry something local. Like, that drives me absolutely nuts. Like, the, the distribution is there. You, you can get them. And, like, when they don't carry something local, it's like, you're not really doing the beer thing right, dude, if you're not carrying at least something from your local area. Uh, yeah, at least, at least from coming from a craft beer uh, nerds like us. You yeah. Know, that's, <laughs> it's, it's aggravating because, you're you know, five blocks west. Why not have something down the street, you know? And it's not like I said that it's hard to get the distribution anymore. It's not right. like these guys are so small and they haven't figured out their distribution yet. You guys are out in distribution. It's available to order. You should get it. Right. Something. Yeah. At least one local beer on tap. Right. Sure. So, you know, with the trot being right here, what made you guys choose this location here in downtown St. Pete? Um, you know, I'm not I, – I guess Mike chose it because uh, it is a large space. Mm-hmm. It's a little bit. It's a little bit off the beaten path. Like a lot of the other breweries that have opened up have, have chosen to be downtown. They have a smaller space, but they're, they get a lot more just random foot traffic. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, I guess, he had a vision yeah. for for the tasting room and the way it is, and, and it really uh, people have accepted it very mm-hmm. well. The the large space where you can go out there in the brewery. We have all the, the fun games yep. to play, the seating, the stage. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Bands. You guys seem very uh, family friendly as well. You guys oh, bring your kids yeah. in, and we get we get kids here all the time. It's Tuesday, and Wednesday afternoons come by. I saw you have root beer. Whole and group stuff, of you know, soccer so. moms out there, <laughs> <laughs> kids running around throwing the throwing the jingle blocks at each other. It's a great time. Awesome. <laughs> have yeah. you guys uh? Uh, you said you you started in the restaurant first. Was a restaurant in St. Pete as well in the yeah, area? Yeah, it's, it's right down on Beach Drive. So you guys are all pretty much St. Pete natives, live around in the area? Or? In the area. Okay. Mike Mike's lived here in St. Pete his whole life. Cool. That's always a cool story, too. You know, somewhere you grew up, you're kind of giving back to the community that, that kind of gave to you. You know, so that's really cool. Sure. Yeah, we, we do all sorts of charity events. And when I actually, we have a charity event going on today. They're uh, show, showing the Kentucky Derby tonight and raising money for, for some event. Oh, that's cool. Very cool. That's nice. Yeah, that's, you know, keeping it local. So, with being in downtown St. Pete, have do you think that has driven business 
forward or more around here because i mean we have a gallery right here we have a bunch is like an art scene here where we're at mm -hmm. so I, I i'm not gonna claim that we did that <laughs> but this this area was definitely very up and coming when we moved here okay. I, i'll say that we probably didn't hinder it oh but, okay but yeah, it was yeah, definitely yeah. on its way the, 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 the market across the street bill that was already there okay we, we just happen to be here too now and do you think that's helped drive oh yeah you know, i mean brand and the brewery you know you guys got here today. Our parking lot was completely full. Yeah, and, yeah. And, yeah. You know, like yeah. that's There's that's tons not of traffic that's not a normal now. noon occurrence at, yeah. at your average you know brewery tasting room. I don't mm -hmm. think. No. So you know, as soon as we open, there's people trying to come in the door. Literally, you yeah, know, even even, even before because they, they went over there, they did a little shopping, and what's yeah. better than a cold beer after that? Absolutely. Sure. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna call myself a beer nerd. So we talked earlier. We do some home brewing. Can you can you go in a little bit about the brewery kind of setup, what you guys have going on here, and and some of the growth you guys are about getting ready to, to okay get so, into? So we we opened with a 30 barrel brew house. Uh, at the time, it was I think the biggest brew house in the area uh scar city it was pretty big they have a 15 and a 30 so yeah. we were, you said 30 30 barrels about a thousand gallons yeah, yeah it's it's, it's a, a little 30, less 31 31 gallons of barrel so it's like 9 30. okay and uh so we started with that we had two 60 barrel fermenters and two 30 barrel fermenters and for the first i'd say six months like we had no problem with the capacity mm -hmm. we were nowhere near where we where we were stressed for the beer and then we got the cans and it just exploded uh we we got a 120 barrel fermenter in in may no no it's me now uh january mm -hmm. okay and then we got the second one in in february about a month maybe six weeks later mm -hmm. and both times like we've we've had the the crew come in and put the put it in place and had a plumber there that day or the next day to plug it up so that i could brew on it the day after that nice oh, wow like we just <laughs> needed the beer that that hard yeah cool. i mean you said you guys seem to be like turning around beer rather fast you yeah, know it's it's yeah it's, and that's a good thing it keeps your yeast fresh and, and, and active so yeah. it helps us helps us save money and and makes a better better beer what's yeah. your uh, typical brew schedule you guys going seven days a week five days a week uh you know it, it all just depends on how often the uh the tanks need to get turned over mm -hmm. we we end, we end up kind of like with a with a strong brew week where we fill everything up in four days just knock it out mm -hmm. and then have some some leeway time maybe uh five six days of uh, we can brew on our pilot system for tasting room beers and then we'll have five or six days of let's get them all empty <laughs> and you know as as we're emptying one we're, we're canning it and then uh the other brewers he's filling it back up you know it's like as soon as mo most of like tomorrow i'm gonna send a tank to the bright tank i have to clean it and I'll fill it up the same day because we just need the beer working non-stop i mean that's a good that's a good side for business you know yeah you have to flip them real fast yeah Definitely. uh the pilot system is that the one that's in this room over here no, what's over there? Those are those are the fermenters we use for the pilot system. Okay, they're they're two or three barrels, and it's we have a, it's called the Alpha Ruby from Ruby Street Brewing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a bot, just just three burner with some pumps on there, and, and that's what we use for all of our test batches. You know, it's where we used to make our IPA, and then kind of got the the recipe you know narrowed down, and then started brewing it thirty barrels at a time. Same thing with our red ale. People really received it well in the tasting room, and so now that's one of our core brands. Can you can you talk about what's kind of in the pilot program? Is it is it you, know, you have to kill me? Kind of super secret like hush what's hush or up? yeah? What do you what do you got in there? Um, we right now uh, I've got uh, Belgian Dark Strong. Oh, yeah, with, with, a, with a good. <laughs> when do I when do I come back for that one? We uh, <laughs> we we made thirty barrels of that uh, last last year, and we barrel aged most of it, and that was one of our most well received beers. We, oh wow! We we didn't we didn't enter in any contest, so like I can't say that it won awards or anything. Right. Mm -hmm. But it, at a lot of a lot of beer fest, they would release it as a special release, and mm -hmm. there would be a line ready to drink it, and it would be gone wow. in twenty minutes. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. I, I love never Belgians. Pinned Belgian strong here. Yeah, which is good. You know? yeah. It ended up you know it, it ended up at eleven percent, which you would think would hit you in the face, but it, it just it really mellowed out in the barrel. You know, it was a nice smooth smooth fruity beer. People we really loved it. I got one more thing on the beer geek side. Is that a yeast lab over there you have in that we, room? We do have a lab. Uh, we are partnered with a professor from USF. Mm -hmm. His name is Jim Leonard. And we have USF interns that come in here and do yeast work or just test on the beer. So they they get class credit and they'll come. I can give them a yeast sample and they'll look under the microscope, count the cells, give me the viability. Wow. You know, and they'll, they'll, they take samples from the fermenters every four or five days and culture them to make sure there's nothing growing in there that shouldn't be in mm -hmm. there. Just, you know, everything from IBU tests to alcohol percentage tests. Like they're, they're just collecting a ton of data for us to make sure that we're staying consistent. Mm -hmm. Wow, really cool. Would you ever consider interning UCF students? I mean, that's uh, yeah. that'd be a long drive. <laughs> I'm just throwing that out anybody there. Anybody that wants to come out. <laughs> just happen to know a couple. <laughs> yeah. Anybody that wants to come out, I'll, I'll take them. So, you know, working at a brewery here in, in the, the Tampa Bay area, do you think, what do you think of the, the, the craft beer scene around 
Tampa, St. Pete overall? I think it's it's pretty great. Uh, it's it's only going to get better. Uh, right now, there's there's another brew opening about, about a block and a half away from here. It's mm-hmm. called Vanilla Soil Works. Mm-hmm. And two other buildings within a block of them that have been applied to be rezoned to be a brewery. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, there, it's just exploding here. I think there's a Sil- Silver King and Tarpon. I think they're getting ready to open up in May. They're they're it's exploding. Pinellas County in general is getting a ton of breweries. Yep. Yeah. Sorry, I, I was no okay. not not paying attention. <laughs> yeah, um, not not only are they all opening up, but they're all seeing that there's an opportunity to make a lot of beer. You know, there's, you know, in Asheville there's a, a 200 breweries or whatever. Yeah. So the, even a lot of them are, are smaller smaller breweries that just operate out of their tasting room. Whereas mm-hmm. we got we got a ton of thirsty Floridians down here. So yeah, you know, that's you're that, oh, absolutely. <laughs> your, your 15 and your 20 or 30 or your 50 barrel fermenters. I mean, uh, brew houses opening up from from the back because they know that the, the, the demand is there for the beer mm-hmm. yeah. yeah so you were talking about growth so you're gonna be ready to put your uh, your red ale out in the market is that correct 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 we uh we would have ordered the cans on this last truck but uh we just couldn't make enough blonde and ipa mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so hopefully uh next next monday actually we're getting in two new tanks we're we're, we're moving some of our uh, smaller tanks out and putting in another 120 fermenter and a 120 bright which the 120 bright is really what we're hoping for the the boats. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you, you think about it right now, we have a 60 bright and the, the 120 fermenters. I've got to move half the beer in there, can it keg it, wash it, move the next half in there, can it keg it, and then I can brew. Whereas if I've got the 120, I can move the whole thing over and refill that. You know, I can get two extra days mm-hmm. on on that on that fermenting vessel. So if I'm doing that for, for six or four fermenters, mm-hmm. you know, that's that's almost a, a, an extra brew cycle every month I'm getting in. Right. Cool. Well. Um, you drink. I'm assuming you're being a brewer. You drink a lot of beer outside I, of work. I do drink a lot of beer. Actually, <laughs> I drink a lot of beer inside of work. Inside okay. of work. Well, <laughs> some of the perks. That's sorry. really yeah. str- that's really strange, right? Because most jobs, like when you you work at the job, like the last thing you want to do is come is home drink. and like do what you do yeah. at work. But yeah, brewers, oh, yeah. it's way that's, different. That's what my buddy. My buddy says he works works at the bar. It's, it's the greatest place to work. As soon as you clock out, you're already at the bar. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. So last weekend, me me and Preston went to Mermaid Juice in Mount Dora, which was recently voted the number one craft beer bar in Florida. Okay. So. Mount Dora, Florida. Mount Nobody Dora, knows where that is. Mount Dora, Florida. And it's real. It's like this little antique shop that you would never think had beer in it. And in the back, you've got amazing aged kegs and just stuff he holds on to. It's yeah. very it's unique. Interesting. So, so as a brewer and as, you know, when you're off the clock, what do you look for in, in like a bar? Uh, I, like, I like a tap list that if whoever I have with me, that they can, that they can get something there. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of your craft brewer brewing places get too much into IPAs and things that you know they have five different IPAs on and you know what if what if I've, I've got someone who he, he likes a lighter beer or mm-hmm. she wants a stout yeah. or whatever you know just have a variety and that's that's what we, we try to do here yeah. like we literally go in the walk in and look and say okay we have three dark beers two brown beers a, a red beer and you know like we try mm-hmm. to try to mix it up we want some lights and some darks and yeah some IPAs that's great right and that's, I mean, that's something we noticed when we first walk in and, and later on this episode when we try the different beers. You guys don't have 17 IPAs. You have one, maybe two. Yeah, we, we do have uh, some recipes, you know, black IPA, double IPA, uh, smash IPA that, that, is, that are they're great, they're well-received, but mm-hmm. we just don't have any on right now. They, uh, they're rotating through the, through the cycle. We just haven't had a chance to make them again yet. Cool. So um, what is your favorite beer to make and also to drink from Three Daughters? Uh, I guess the the brown pelican. That's our, our dark wheat. Okay. Nice. Um, it's I I just love that. I love German things, a German beer, <laughs> yeah. and and it's just it's a you know we don't make a whole lot of it, so it's it's kind of a pain for us to to keep the yeast alive. Mm-hmm. So we almost just have to do a one and done, like we just order the yeast. Right. So you just get that fresh German yeast. It's just ready to go. Mm-hmm. And you know you know the batch is gonna be good. And you know, it just it makes the whole brewery smell like banana and clove while it's while it's gassing out, mm. while it's fer- fermenting. So it's just it's fantastic. Love oh. it. Uh, any, any questions? No Can't more think for me. It? Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> He's along what's for the ride, man. Your, what's your favorite <laughs> beer to make, or is that the same? That, the so same, that was it. Same? Yeah. Um, my favorite beers to drink though are are that brown pelican, and if we don't have it on, our red ale is really killer. Okay. It's a good. It's a good. Mal- I'm a fan of malty beers. I don't. I don't really care for IPAs. I mean, I'm right. I, we make them. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I taste and make sure they're correct, but it's, it's not my, my go-to. We talked earlier. Everybody at these red ales now is just hop, is hopping in the death, and it's just like, why? Let, let the caramel, let that sweetness be the star of that beer. Right. Ours, ours, ours is a good uh, caramel malty finish, but actually it's got a little chocolate note in it, too. It's a darker red than mm. most are, but uh, it's, it's, I think it's killer. I think it's going to go great in the cans. Cool. I don't know about you guys. I'm getting thirsty. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go take some beer, huh? Yeah, we can do that. Sounds All right, good. So in, uh, after this uh, interview, which is now ending, uh, we are going to go behind the bar. 
and with Captain Steve here and try different Three Daughters bre- beers. Yeah. You guys ready? Let's do this. Right, let's, let's go. Welcome back to At The Bar Podcast. We're here at Three Daughters Brewing, and we have Preston from the Beer Chasers. What's up? Chad. St. Pete, Florida. We have, by the way. Oh, I'm Mike, <laughs> and then we have Captain Steve here from Three go. Daughters, What's who up, is guys? a brewer here. And we're doing, uh, tell us what we're doing here, Steve. Oh, we're going to sample some of our core beers right now. Uh, first beer up is our Beach Blonde Ale. And this is your flagship, this correct? This is our flagship beer. We sell twice as much of this than anything else. In the, in the right. tasting room included. Uh, it, you know, whenever what we put on, we put double IPAs on, we put quads on. Yeah. It, it, it just blows them out of the water. Like people, people say that craft beer is all about, you know, these fancy beers and, and, and doing things super hard, but people love a good light beer. Cool. Let's check it out. Yeah. Cheers, fellas. Cheers. Thanks, Steve. All right, I'm a, I've Thank already Steve. started here. Yeah, it's okay. This is, uh, He's thirsty. So what, what um, on the nose, what kind of do you pick up? Uh, so it's it's got a light citrus note. Okay. We use uh, we use Falconer Flight uh, hops in it, mm-hmm. and give it that a uh, little bit of a not not a grapefruit like an IPA, just yeah. a little bit of a like a lemon or a or not orange maybe, just just lighter citrus than you would get right. in an yeah. IPA. A very very right. summery tasting, like a yep. good summer yeah, beer. Yeah, it's very summer with a little bit of, of bitterness to it. What's the uh, I want to call it buttery, but it's very like a, a sweet kind of malted. What, yeah, what am I getting it's, there? It's a very uh, it's a simple grain bill being a light beer. So that that malt just carries through, you know, and, and we, we try not to bitter it completely out. So it's yeah. it would maybe be a little bit you could say unbalanced towards the malt, mm-hmm. right. but it makes it makes it for a, a much easier drinking beer. Yeah, it's very light, crisp, refreshing. Very light, something you can definitely take to the beach and, and enjoy. And this is a Florida beer. Oh yeah, it's it's hoppy enough to where I think the IPA fans would really kind of like it. Yeah, but like mellow enough to where you know us more darker drinker malt yeah. you know get that. It's Ooh. very crisp. Yeah. yeah, it drinks well it's on a boat. I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> How we advocate boating and driving, you know, <laughs> drinking and boating, I should say. So yeah, this is this is really I really enjoy. Yeah, this is good. And this is this you can get. What's the distribution on this? We're we're everywhere. I mean, I've seen everywhere. this. We're statewide, and the cans are are, are statewide as well. Uh, in the in the obviously the Tampa and St. Pete areas, we're in. I mean, every Republic, ABC, Rally, uh, Trader Joe's, you know, Total Wine. If, Everywhere. Everywhere. If they, if they sell canned beer, we're probably there. And this is at Tropicana Field? This, this is beer? on draft. Okay, cool. Tropicana so field. check it out. Next we're at a race game. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So this is very good. All right. Pass it on. Pass on to finish my glass here. What we got second? Next is going to be our Bimini Twist IPA. Okay. okay. Put that over there. It's kind of a West Coast style. But uh, still not. We're not trying to be the, the, the biggest... Yeah. IPA. I'll fully admit I'm not an IPA fan, but you know that we've talked about it. <laughs> my love for German and sweet, but I don't mind them. So it's 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 a good balanced IPA. It's a seven percent. So you, you've got a good strong bitterness to back up that uh, the caramel of the malt bill. Okay. And then it's got some floral notes of grapefruit, and and just some of that flavor as well. We we dry hop with East Kent. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that that brings a lot of that citrus right on the nose. Yeah, it definitely smells of a West Coast IPA. Yeah. Uh, not strong, strong, but you can you can pick it up. Yeah, I think it's nicely balanced. I really enjoy that. People uh, people come in here and and if if they've never had an IPA before, they can they can like this beer and then you yeah. know, fall in love with it and then they'll you know IPA, IPA people they're kind of uh they 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 grow like the hops kill their tongue. They want <laughs> they want the, the enamel on their teeth melted we're, off. We're yeah. like we're like we're like the the gateway IPA. <laughs> no, I I'd, yeah. I'd agree. I think it's it's yeah. pleasantly balanced. Like I said, I'm I'm not a hop fan, but I do Agreed. enjoy it when there's some malt there with it, and that's actually a really good job. Yeah, for yeah for a West Coast IPA, I think this is a good balanced intro to the genre. And you're so. saying the the grapefruit or something like that that that's in there. Like after you said it and and trying it, that's definitely one of the first tastes that I'm getting yeah. from it. Those uh those West Coast hops, that's that's what they. I don't know if it's the air or the water out there. <laughs> grow with that flavor. In Cascade. Yeah, yeah, we use we use Cascade, uh, some Centennial. And again, that, that seven C's, we we really love that hop. Yeah. So we use it for those both it's those two brews. Not bad for seven percent. Do you use uh, the the hops in this one at, at different times of the boil, or do you guys use like it's? We use this one at sixty, this one at thirty, this one at fifteen. Or? Uh, some some of both. You know, yeah. we'll, we'll we'll bitter with a different hop than we'll flavor and and, yeah. and aroma with, but we can do flavor and aroma with the same thing, or or, or dry hop with with something that we used for flavor. That, that, and that was just something you know recently within the last year, I really realized like using the hops at different times really can give like a different you know flavor or bitterness to it. One of the Bell's ones use uses Cascade only, and in our beer review, we're like, wow, I can I can taste all the different hops in this, and it ended <laughs> up being like one hop just at different times. Oh, so they're, they're they're crazy plants. So let me pass this down for you. There you go. 
So this one, the third of, of the uh, the beers here. Should probably do that red. The, the, this should be now. the. You want to do the red next? <laughs> yeah. Well, let's, hey. let's finish with it. Yeah, that, yeah. that's cool. Let me Is get that red. That's going to be Captain yeah, Steve, I trust. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Here. So these these are the. Beers I don't want to second guess Captain Steve's judgment. Yeah, <laughs> these are the beers that we have: the two flags, the 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 beach and then the IPA mm -hmm. and then this is the red yeah, and this which is, is now going to be in can yes Rod Bender Red is going to be our, our next oh, can sorry, beer slack. it's okay oh, oh gosh okay. an homage to the, the fishing and the, the community oh yeah so it's it's just another uh, just straightforward beer all of our all of our beers you know it's a very simple malt, malt bill you know it's wow. got some caramel in it mm -hmm. uh, a little chocolate malt to darken it up a little bit and you, you can smell you, that chocolate. Oh yeah, yeah, you, yeah right off oh, the yeah. bat. It almost almost like chocolate milk sometimes when I get mm -hmm. when I get done with a with a long day. I come in and I just I just down one, and it's just like having a glass of cold milk. <laughs> like I never you know had a red ale with chocolate in it. Yeah, ever. I don't think I have Especially either. Especially on the nose too. Yeah, so you definitely is, smell that. Yes, yeah, so the, the the aroma is really good. You can pick up the chocolate, the caramel. I think again, like your IPA, it's beautifully balanced like like we we're talking before like everybody with their red ales now is just hopping the crap out of them and it's just like i want them i want the malts and the caramel and that sweetness to kind of be the star and then kind of have that hop come in and like okay i'm here i'm kind of balance <laughs> it out and again great job yeah i get a little coffee sweetness a little on, on the end well. yeah it's uh yeah you're gonna get that it's, that, it's that, a coffee chocolate is yeah. kill them all uh, this is this is a killer beer i i th i think this is my favorite so far that we had pour this over ice or something Crazy <laughs> for ice cream. <laughs> yeah, or you can just pour it in your mouth. Yeah, in your mouth. Yeah, <laughs> I prefer that method. Awesome. Mm. Hey, this is really good. I really like that. I'm gonna save that last little bit for later. All right. Cool. Hey, brother. So right. now we have the. Uh, we're live, so there's people. Yeah. I'm dropping off my car. I have my car work today. Oh, okay. So this is the brown pelican Dunkelweiss. Oh. Classic. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Classic German dark wheat style. <laughs> Thank you again for brewing some German beers. Oh, yes, no, yes. You guys are welcome. The uh, we use we use Weizenfunner yeast. You know, it's a my good favorite. classic German Weizen yeast. Ooh, uh, banana bomb. It's German. <laughs> yeah. And it, you know, it's it just it's been really great. For oh, us. you can smell it. The, yeah, uh, the reception in the tasting room for this beer was just like I said, fantastic. We almost had to scrap it, like it wasn't oh. selling that well. And oh no, dude, people, I love it. People I already love the smell of it. People would come in here and and say, hey, I'll take a brown pelican. Oh, we don't have it. And they would just walk out. Wow, like fourteen beers on draft, and that was all they wanted. Wow, yeah. I mean that's a compliment. I mean, it sucks they couldn't stay, but <laughs> I mean, if their beer is that good, you know, I mean, mm. this is definitely German. Uh, yeah, you know, that's you get, the on yeast for sure. You, get, you definitely get the yeast, the banana, the clove, and then you get like that darkness to it that helps kind of like, I guess, mellow it out a little bit on the on the nose. Mm -hmm. so Very smooth. You're gonna get a good spice character, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and then the chocolatiness and the, and the maltiness of the sweetness to back that up. And then, like you guys said, the, the nose is, is fantastic. Yeah, yeah, it's this, great. This is one it's of the things good. that I'd say we've we've struggled with the most. Mm -hmm. um, all of our other ales that are American ales, it's very clean yeast. You know, American ale yeast it doesn't impart a lot of flavor. Right. So you can drive the flavor of the beer by the malt in the in the hops. Mm -hmm. Whereas uh, the Weizen yeast and, and Belgian yeast, they're a completely different animal. You know, to get to get the beer to be consistent, like you have to have the yeast in the right mind mindset mm -hmm. almost, and to have it at the right temperature for the right number of days and, 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 and do things in a very, very specific order to get the flavor to be the same every time. Right. Are you using a uh, Noble Hops, a Cas or not Cascade, uh, Howler Tau or? Uh, Tetninger. Tetninger. Mm. This is very good. That's good. I like it. Clean. It's, it's very banana-y, which mm -hmm. I like. Not so much of a clove, at least in yeah. my, uh, my, my palate. I prefer the banana over the clove. As oh, well, yeah, absolutely. And this is definitely dark that you can get the German malts from it. Mm. So this is, this is a killer beer. I really like this a lot, too. I mean, it's all been killer. It's all been great. It's always really good, yeah. Um, so these you can get the last two, the, the, the Pelican and the Red. Red's going to be statewide distribution. Yeah, they're actually, they're actually the, the Red is statewide and draft. Okay. So you just have to look for it. It's not as, not as widely Accessible, picked up as, right. as the Blonde is or the IPA, mm -hmm. but it's, it's catching up very, very closely. And, then, and the Pelican is, where can you Ma get that? Mainly just in, in Tampa. Uh, I think I think Pepin. There's a couple bars mm -hmm. in, Pep in uh, Tampa that just love it. So Pepin distributed it, gets it to them. Uh, we were on draft in Bush Gardens for a long time. Okay, very cool. Oh, nice. Uh, we actually, we we may be putting it on in, in Disney. Oh uh, wow! Coming up soon. They have a <laughs> That's little. Awesome. We, we are actually on draft in, in Walt Disney World, in uh, Blizzard Beach. They have our, our red on and our and our blonde on. It's good enough. And they, they sell our cans out there. That's really cool. Yeah, it is. It, we were really excited about it. So hopefully, you know, we can we can keep giving them good beer, and they'll they'll keep selling it for us. Yeah, you cool. might yeah. be able to get into their food and wine festival that they have there. I know that they yeah. do. Have, uh, I mean, there's tons I of places to serve beer. I think I think we were in their flower festival 
oh, last yeah, month yeah. or something like that. Okay. And you know they they sold a ton of beer. Uh, the Orlando distributor was buying very small orders, and yeah. we we sent a guy out there to talk to them. I guess they, I think actually reached they reached out to us. They were looking for some craft beer, and I I, I want to say we were the only people that showed up. Everyone oh, else said they wow. were too, like, too busy to go talk to Disney World. Like, you kidding me? What? <laughs> <laughs> That's like opportunity. Yeah. Wow. So we, we sent our, our guy, the guy that you guys thought was going to be here, uh, Chris, our craft amb- ambassador. Yeah. He went out there and talked to him and, you know, brought some growlers out there, gave him some samples, and they were all for it. And they, they gave us a couple taps, gave us a try. And so far, the, the partnership's going great. You know, we're, we're giving them the beer. They're, they're drinking it. And we'll just look to grow from there. Are there – I should have asked this, I guess, during the podcast part, but uh, – are there like any brew fest like festivals that are around here locally that you guys go um, to? It's you know th- as big as craft beer is getting right now. There is a craft beer festival every weekend. Almost Maybe too, almost too, almost too much. Yeah, really. It's, yeah. It's, okay. Yeah. The, and and the, not all of them are good, unfortunately. <laughs> that, <laughs> that's that's the problem. When when we first opened and when we had free time, we, we weren't brewing so much. You know, me, myself and the brewmaster would would you know go to all of them. But after you go to one every weekend for six months. You get tired. Like, yeah. It's it's it's, it's really neat to go to the first one or the or the first five sure. and try all <laughs> yeah. kinds of new beers. Yeah. But once you get there and you've you've tried all these beers before and you like some of them, so you yeah. go get those or you get your your, fav- your favorites or you, or you see other brewers that you know and talk to them for a minute. But then you end up just sitting behind your tent eating, drinking yeah. your own beer. When, when <laughs> Sam <laughs> when Which when Sam Adams thing. is out there, get, you know, with Boston Lager, it's like uh, you know you you deserve to be here. But at the same time, like when I want to go to a craft beer festival, I want to see a lot of new stuff that I've never seen before, and that's generally right. my experience is. 80% of them, it's like, I've had all these beers before. It's nothing really special or unique, kind of like you're alluding to. I think I think the only one I've been to that was really unique, unique we did a, a rare beer fest, mm-hmm. uh, downtown St. Pete here. But, again, again, most craft breweries see a, see a rare beer, and they want to make a big beer and barrel age it. And, right. And, you know, yeah. so that you've got 100 beers there, but they're all 9%. <laughs> how many samples can you really yeah. have, and how long you, until you're Everybody's getting one-ounce samples. So blasted, <laughs> you, you can't even tell what you're drinking. You yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, And they do it in the middle of the summer for some reason. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when it's hottest. Yeah. Um, are there any festivals? Again, I'm, I'm new to the area. I was born and raised here. I moved to Orlando, met this knucklehead. We did some stuff, and I moved, I moved back over <laughs> here. And uh, I don't know this knucklehead very well. <laughs> I call him a knucklehead. Um, are any of the festivals locally oriented is there any any cool real like hey these are mostly local even even just florida beers let's say or is there anything that's more catered to that that you know of or um i'm sure there are uh actually the, there's a bar downtown here called the ale and the witch mm-hmm. been there oh, yeah. and uh brett he's awesome he's yeah. been supporting craft beer since before there was a craft beer scene mm-hmm. and he hosted an event at the local downtown last year with all of the local breweries in the area it was, it was like 16 breweries I great think. And they had special cask releases during mm-hmm. the thing at certain times. It wasn't as well attended mm-hmm. as everyone had hoped, but uh, it was shame. still a really great event. Yeah. yeah. Now, is there any future plans that you are aware of, of any like collaborations with other breweries or any maybe new beers you guys might be trying out here in the tasting room? We've, uh, we've had several breweries ask us about it. Mm-hmm. You know, they even, even come and, you know, sit down and talk about what we would maybe even brew together. Mm-hmm. But right now we just don't have the time or the or the space to put another beer. So even yeah. if we, we we made something with somebody, it would, it would be a, a small batch something and yeah. sell it. That's it. And one of the things that like I, I might have said before, Mike is real about charity. Mm-hmm. So if we if we ever did a collaboration with something, I'm sure we would want to, like all the proceeds to go to go to something, not just sell the beer. Right. And is that something that you guys do all the time? The you know the charity or the fundraising or is that? He's he's pretty solid. We we have a lot of organizations uh, come here, and either host an event, and we'll donate the space. You know, if, if the, the Lions Club or somebody wants to have their year right. party, mm-hmm. right. you know, usually we charge a couple hundred dollars for uh, the space that we'll you know we'll give them their own space in the back of brewery, but we'll just waive that or we'll give them some kegs for, wow. the, for their Very party cool. or whatever you know. We had a we had a big event here a couple of weeks ago. It's called like uh, cuts for cuts for cops mm-hmm. or something like that, mm-hmm. and. Uh, had a couple hundred people show up to, to hang out and drink beer after they had all gotten their haircut for a hundred dollars <laughs> a, a, t- a pop wow. for, for, the, uh, for the for the charity cool cool um so any 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 future plans of, of maybe expanding or we actually have a, a, a drawn up plan back there i can show you guys you can take a picture of it or whatever but uh <laughs> this this giant this giant grass field behind here we're gonna erect the Another 12,000 square foot facility. Nice. Wow. Fill it with uh, a giant <laughs> wa- walk in that we can drive our forklift through. Very build nice, build yeah. a proper loading dock to accept and, res- and send out orders. Mm-hmm. And we're the, the plane has 10, 150 barrel fermenters and two, two 
uh, wow. 300 barrel bright tanks. That's growth. Yeah. Yeah. So no kidding. Yeah. I mean, it won't be. It won't. We won't get all the tanks right away. Obviously. Right. But, of course. Sure. But they're 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 just going to be planned in. The you know all the glycol piping will be put in place for them. And the, the floor drains will be in the right places and everything like that. <laughs> and then, yep. then just a lot of open space that we'll, I'm sure we'll manage to fill with all kinds of junk. But, uh, uh, yeah. But, yeah, that's, that's our next big expansion. We're, we're pretty much done in this, in this tasting room and this, yeah. this building once we get those other two tanks. So we had to, to move on. Did you guys expect to have to uh, move up so quickly? I mean, I've, it, it sounds like months. it sounds like uh, yeah, you guys have been open for sixteen yeah. months. So you guys are looking at expanding. That there's like there's that. been preparations. It sounds like he, you know, he's anticipating some of this. But did you expect to grow so fast? Uh, I, you know what, I think so. Um, hmm. There's one thing that that you know we'd never worked at breweries before. We none of us have. Ever, yeah. Wow. You know, but uh, Mike, our owner, he's he has been a restaurateur for twenty something years. Right. I want to say, mm-hmm. and he knows how to take care of people. Right. He wants yeah. people to have a good time, you know, whether it's silly games in the tasting room yeah. or <laughs> a, uh, a bar owner has a problem with one of our beers and he drives them a new keg that day and gives yeah. it to him for free. Wow. You know, it's, yeah. he wants everyone to be taken care of. And, and that, that carries huge weight with, with you know, and, and, that, and that sounds the same, you know, like Dano, we we're talking about mermaid right, juice mermaid earlier. Juice, yeah. We think the reason he's a number one craft beer bar in Florida is because he is very over hospitable i mean it's, it's like you're walking into your family it's like hey welcome come on in glad you guys are here what can i get you you know eat on the busiest nights the bartenders are never angry or upset you know what right. i mean so i can see that, that that customer service really drives that growth i mean it's it's the, the goofy games we have out here you know the darts and everything <laughs> it's it's funny to think about you know you go somewhere that's got a dartboard and they've got two darts left because all the other ones are broken. <laughs> right I mean, we, we buy darts by the every case. bar ever we've, yeah. been, we've been over for 16 months we've had to replace all four of those dartboards twice <laughs> uh, we, we go through four ping pong paddles every week <laughs> in the ping pong room i mean how do you break a ping pong paddle yeah. what happens you know yeah. and you have out. chess boards out we there have, we've never lost a piece <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> I mean, they, they get played all the time. Yeah. But, you know, people people are cool. You know, like they don't steal the Jenga pieces or, or <laughs> oh, that's, too often. That's good. Though. It's the worst yeah. game but, of Jenga you know, ever. It's it's one of those things where like craft beer people they 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 come together. You know, people yeah, will play good. a game of Jenga and it falls over. They'll pick it back up and put it together for the next person. You know, there's there's no no one making them do that. Yeah. 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 But you no, know, it's true. It's like it's like a family place. It's so a great community to be a part of. of. Yeah, it I'm glad, really, it truly I'm glad is. we can give back. I'm glad, yeah, I'm glad we're absolutely. here. You know, talking with you guys and appreciate you letting us come and hang out for a little bit. Yeah, and, and you guys have been nothing but kind and respectful and open. We walked in and we never met before till this morning. Yeah. Oh, what do you guys want? I walked cool. in cameras blazing. Didn't cameras ask nobody. Blazing, we had. <laughs> I'm walking through the brewery like I own the place. Yeah, we're, I mean, we're walking in employee doors and keep the door shut. <laughs> and they're like, oh, yeah, just walk in and out. You guys have been nothing but hospitable, respectful. <laughs> we moved this table like six polite. feet. <laughs> yeah, we, we, yeah, where we're we, sitting, this is like. We put Hillbilly feet. Highlander in front of the door. Yeah, like, and you guys have been <laughs> nothing but respectful and kind and open and inviting. And I mean, that means a lot, not only to. Me as a drinker, but also as someone who's looking to create content. And yeah. I want to create content. All of us here want to create content to highlight the good people, the, the, the businesses that are doing it right, whether it's Three Daughters, Mermaid Juice, anything like that. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of bad breweries out there that Tackle. are disrespectful, <laughs> that are disrespectful and don't treat customers right. And that's not how this, that's not this industry, in my opinion. And, and you guys have been nothing but perfect and amazing. And you guys have good beer. And, Thank you so much for inviting us. And on behalf of all of us, yeah. uh, thank you for having us. It means a lot. In, in closing, I guess we're wrapping up here. Absolutely, what, what, yeah. what we're getting to, uh, is there anything you want to say to, to the Beer Chaser audience, the At The, at bar, the bar podcast? Any, anything you anybody who's say. watching, what do you want to say? We're open seven days a week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, buddy. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, beer, beers have been great. Super hospitable, super friendly. Uh, yeah, uh, where, uh, where can people find you guys? Uh, so the, I guess the best place, the guess, best way, uh, if, you, if you look at the, your lo- if you know who your local AB distributor is, that's who we go through with AB Network, find mm-hmm. their website. They have a product locator on there. Mm-hmm. You can search by brand and by flavor of any, any brewery that they mm-hmm. distribute. And 90% of the time, it's, it's pretty accurate. If you go to like a World of Beer, they run through taps so quickly, <laughs> it, it, might, it might be a little bit off. Extremely yeah. difficult. But yeah. if, if, you've, if you've got an, like, one, one thing that we... That we we, we to, knew somebody who worked there. I mean, <laughs> one thing that we try to specialize on is, is we, don't, we don't just distribute our beer to rotating tap places right we, we have an, a sales force of three people that go go to individual bars bring bring growlers bring cans sell them on the beer you know and then and then we we get it we get the forever taps that's what we're about oh, mm-hmm. we, awesome. we, we want to have the beer on tap forever there and then once they put us on and we're on for three months and we no one ever run out of beer and they you know and so and so down the street you know can't make enough of his ipa mm-hmm. they pick up our ipa 
right. and we got another forever tap. Yeah, and that's one thing that we that we really try to do with our expansion. So so look us up on on that on that network. Find where we're on draft, or, or just you know look for us in the cans and in all your major retailers. And obviously, yeah. you guys are on Facebook, Twitter, got, Facebook, got Twitter, email, yeah. or, uh, 3D website, brewing. Read all 3D on brewing. Facebook. All right. Well, thanks again for having us. Any any last words, fellas? Captain Steve, you're the man. Appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you guys for coming out. All right. This is Captain Steve from Three Dollars Brewing. Mike, Chad, Preston, thanks for watching.